Oh man, this is going to make people mad. Especially because ReZero is popping off and for whatever reason, both fandom has each other living rent free on each other's head and they're trying to all drag each other down even though the authors love each other and I'm just farming the mental ill on both sides. But this is called, I don't like Mushoku Tensei and here's why. And by the way, I love Mushoku Tensei. I think Mushoku Tensei is one of the great isekais. I still prefer ReZero over Mushoku Tensei, but it's by a slight margin, simply due to how unlikable the character Rudius is. But the show isn't just about Rudius. There's so many other things great about Mushoku Tensei that I think it's a phenomenal series, but probably pretentious. Let's make some people mad. Oh boy, here's another one of those videos which will single-handedly bring down my overall like to dis- 3.1 mil, 20 million dislikes is a crazy ratio. Like ratio. If you've followed this channel for a while, you might know that I'm quite forgiving when it comes to isekai and the associated genres. Based? When I started watching anime, I didn't go down the major shonen route. I actually started off this- what the fuck is this resolution? This is how I started. This the reason that I never watched any slice of life or rom coms or basically anything other than Battle Shonen like Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach was in my mind. If your anime isn't these hype Battle Shonens that has hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of episodes, it's a fucking waste of time. Well, that's what like fourteen year old me thought growing up, and then there was a period of time in college where I had no time for anime, and now I'm revisiting all this different anime that I've missed out. And people are saying like, "Bro, you've never watched Steins Gate? Bro, you never watched Full Metal Alchemist?" Brother, I was too fucking busy trench deep rewatching One Piece probably for the seventh time. Right. I instead chose the major isekai path. As such, me and mediocre isekai shows have a dysfunctional. Yeah, and I'm I'm basically the exact opposite, right? Well, I started with Battle Shonen, and now all I can do is you know isekai, even though I want to do Battle Shonen, but. Now I'm just the self-proclaimed king of shitty isekai reactions on YouTube. As such, me and mediocre isekai shows have a dysfunctional relationship. What's the technical term? Stockholm Syndrome. I- <laughs> The more and more you want, even though it's an abusive relationship, you like need it because you just develop this like attachment towards it. I like isekai, so when I found out that a well-received, critically acclaimed isekai light novel was receiving a high-profile star-studded anime adaptation- How old is this video, by the way? One year ago, okay. So like, this is season two content? Do I see any season two stuff here? I wonder if this is like an opinion made um, purely through, I, I think this is a bit of season two content, yeah. I was quite excited. I watched this show. One second, technical difficulty. And three, two, one, we're good weekly as it aired and I just couldn't get into it. While the first episode was quite promising, I found my interest dwindling as the show rolled on. In this- Really? The first couple episodes of Mushoku Tensei was Rudius as a baby getting horny for, you know, panties of, you know, other girls and his mom's jugs and Roxy showing up and magic and Rudy having like a very impactful moment as Roxy carries Rudy out into the, you know, outside through a horse and it's a beautiful moment as he realizes that he can go outside that he doesn't need to be worrying about what happened back on earth and it's a it's a beautiful moment i i think the, the early game of mushoku tensei was maybe it's not the most exciting things but it was very engaging to me this video i'll try to explain why now before you berate me in the comments know that these are my <laughs> what was the what was the uh comments here hold up hold up hold up, hold up. Get out of here. Mushoku Tensei is peak. You are stupid. I will not elaborate though. <laughs> Anyways, you are Indian, so your opinion. Whoa, 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 Chill the fuck out. Hey, it's him fucking typing this shit, not me. Let's know that these are my opinions. These are the reasons why I don't like this show. Make sure to subscribe. Of course, there's the. Again, these are opinions. And just as free as he's say it, you know, I, I think a lot of people have the wrong idea of what like freedom of speech or like opinions mean. They think that like you can say your opinion all you want and if someone like says your opinion is stupid that's like a violation of their human rights like bro it's just an opinion that's right you had an opinion and i think your opinion is fucking retarded so i'm gonna call you stupid that's my opinion we're both free to say whatever we want a creepy factor since that's the obvious one i'll talk about it later the biggest issue i have with this show aside from the aforementioned creepy stuff is how seriously it takes itself how seriously mushoku tensei takes itself but there is isekais where it's supposed to be serious. Mushoku Tensei, ReZero, these are isekais that's taking itself very seriously. 
And then on the other side of the spectrum could be like Ari Furata. Season 3, I think, is a perfect example of an isekai not taking itself very seriously. There are some epic dramatic moments, but for the most part, it's a light-hearted experience without much consequences to be had. It's not a bad thing to, you know, to be taking it seriously, but if the beholder watching this doesn't like serious isekai and they just want, you know, fun, light-hearted trash, then for sure I could see why someone doesn't like Mushoku Tensei. Now let me make myself clear. It should take itself seriously based on the themes it tackles. Attempting to move past your traumas and failures from your past life is He's jacking off there, by the way. ...a matured concept, and it should be presented seriously. The show can fall apart if they don't do so. But at the same time, this seriousness leads to some issues. Just a clarification, I don't mean every single scene is serious. I mean the overall presentation is. The overall presentation of Mushoku Tensei is serious. Yeah, I, I, I'm just having a hard time understanding the logic that he's trying to build up. He's basically saying he doesn't like it because it's taking himself too seriously. Let's let him cook. Right off the bat, Rudy's shenanigans made me lose interest. You call it shenanigans, I call it behavior that warrants jail time. I agree. I absolutely agree with this. And if you think that the shit that Rudy does is funny and he's just like me for real, that is the biggest fucking self-report and something that I despise that the Mushoku Tensei people are watching this shit thinking that Rudy's behavior is completely justified because it's now a mainstream big show and Oh, look at me! I can do all this degenerate shit too! It's just like, nah, dude. You don't understand the fucking show if you think that what he's doing is good and it's like justified. Time. You know, that whole creepy toddler fiasco. Let me use a series that I do love as an example. The Monogatari series features oh. a lot of questionable stuff, some of which is similar to Mushoku. But that show is so quirky and uniquely presented, you can get through the questionable stuff without taking it too seriously. Mushoku, on the other hand, is dead serious for most of its runtime. Yeah. So when Rudy goes around worshipping underwear, I don't look at it in a fun, look, he's so quirky way. I look at it in a what in the actual f*** is wrong with this And I think you're supposed to feel that way though, right? The example with Monogatari series is that the way that they had a bunch of other quirky shit happening made it such that the goofy moments was more like digestible while still being serious. But in Mushoku Tensei, it's just Rudy being perverted and weird that is breaking his immersion from taking himself seriously. That may be fair to say that your immersion has been broken, but I think that the goal here is to kind of portray the degeneracy of Rudy carrying over from his past life as he gets reincarnated here. And potentially, he can learn from those mistakes and move on, but quite often, he just kind of gets away with all the shit that he never really, you know, got corrected with, right? Man way. Does that make sense? Basically, since most of this show is serious and has a matured presentation, the yeah. scenes which are hopefully supposed to be comedic in nature end up coming off as weird. Again, to me. Yeah, it's a personal opinion for him where the fan service degeneracy from Rudy just kind of breaks that serious immersion. He can't take it seriously. To me, I didn't place that much emphasis on the degeneracy that Rudy was, Rudy was doing because I was so compelled by the world building and just like this rich world of Mushoku Tensei that I just kind of overlooked it. Me. Although even if I look at those scenes in a vacuum, I don't find them entertaining in any way. Who is this for? If you find this stuff fun- <laughs> Who is this for? Look at the thing. It has- It's for the Rudys that exist before he get reincarnated. It's not just for them, but I definitely think there's a lot of those type of people that exist. Just absolute fucking pathetic losers of society. Now, is there like a justified reason of why Rudy became a loser of society? Probably. You saw all the bullying and the abuse and shit. You, one could ask, why don't you fucking better yourself? If you were a true man, you could have fucking fixed your mistakes and confronted your problems. But not everyone's just built like that, right? Funny, good for you, I guess. I don't. If you find this stuff relatable, I implore you to turn yourself in to the- And this is absolutely true, though. I genuinely think that because of how popular Mushoku Tensei has gotten, it creates this safe space for these degenerates that actually feel that they can relate to Rudy for this degenerate shit. Not for the other beautiful moments of him, like, you know, accepting Norn and, you know, Paul and all the beautiful shit. No, no, there's a lot of good qualities about Rudy, but there's also these degenerate shit that I think that the people watching feel like they can just proudly just, you know, label themselves as a degenerate and say, that's my character for real. Like, I'm perfectly fine with Rudy having, like, a, you know, taking panty from the shrine of Roxy just worshiping every day. Remember that one Gideon video we watched? Oh, motherfuckers, fucking, uh, what's it called? Oh, yeah, I, I watched that one show, Jobless Reincarnation, the way that he 
stole his teacher's panties and turned me on. I'm like, what the fuck? There's those people that exist in real life. Authorities. Rudy's behavior was an aspect I could not get behind or turn a blind eye to. It basically made me roll my eyes at everything he did throughout the series. That's two eye related figures of speech, I swear it wasn't on purpose. Rudy's questionable behavior was one of the biggest reasons why the first few episodes didn't grab my attention. Hmm. Or to be more accurate, why they did grab my attention but lost it shortly thereafter. The first episode did stand out to me, although that was largely because of the production value. Another issue I had with this show is also tied to the same cause. I yeah. felt like a major chunk of this show was dull. I have seen and read a lot. Major chunk of this show is dull. Oh, I don't know if I, it's been a while since I watched season one, but I don't think so. I, from what I remember, every episode was so fucking captivating, but maybe again, because I'm, I can look, I can turn a blind eye on what Rudy is doing and just focus on everything around this show. But he can't. Maybe it felt that way. A lot of isekai and or fantasy titles. I mean a lot. And in my mind, I associate this group of genres with a junk food-like sense of fun. The entire mm -hmm. sequence of episodes post Turning Point 1 involved the group going to a place, doing a thing, leaving and repeat. Also, I didn't find- But there were some valuable lessons to be learned during the Demon Continent, right? The stuff will be Turning Point 1 and we're traveling. It's not that these are just random events happening for no reason. Even this shit, right? What happened to these demon kids? Rudy took, 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 he, his plan was not yet, not yet, Ruger. We shouldn't help him, Justin. What happened? They fucking died. The said thing all that interesting. Now again, in theory, this should have been good. Depicting the classic hunting fantasy monsters in a brutal and realistic manner is a yeah. good thing. Oh, you want to take on this quest? Here's a 50 foot cobra on steroids waiting to tear you apart. Oh, what's that? Slavery? That's actually a bad thing, even in another world. <laughs> this is an aspect that should have benefited from how seriously this show takes itself. It should have been a breath of fresh air in a genre which often presents these concepts in a light-hearted manner. But to me, it fell flat. And neither Why? the premise nor the execution was at fault. It's just that I couldn't get Bald. into these episodes because of who the protagonist was. That's it. The essence of this video and his opinion on Mushoku Tensei bad is because of Rudy. That's it. Some people like me can turn a blind eye and just appreciate everything about Mushoku Tensei beyond Rudy's degeneracy. But to some other people, they cannot. They're fixated on everything that Rudy is bad and no longer can they engage and lock in onto the other themes of Mushoku Tensei, which is so fucking good, which is sad, but it's just a personal preference and an opinion. Do you really condemn a guy for saying this shit? It's just what he prefers. You're pre you're pre you can watch whatever you want. Everyone has their right to enjoy whatever they want. And the logic, as long as it lines up, that's fine with me. In my mind, Rudy is a weird, weird individual. As such, I find it very difficult to root for him in any situation. Rudy is the issue. No matter how promising the plot is, I cannot get into it because of him. For reasons I already mentioned. I was essentially watching a series without a protagonist at this point, because he ain't my MC. At this point, I do not care about Rudy, especially after a certain event that occurs later on. Oh yeah. This moment, I still am of the mindset that Eris groomed Rudy and then Eris overpowered Rudy and left him. But also, if you really think about the dynamic here going on and Rudy's real life and you know his you know current age, and I love the mental gymnastics that people bring up to say, "Oh no, it's not fair. Rudy is actually mentally stunted. He's like a 14-year-old living inside like a 40-year-old's body back in real life." And not only that, when he got reincarnated, because it's pretty much a reset. It's like your body hormones and stuff, bro. It's going to make you think like a child, even though you're a fro fucking grown ass adult. There's some really weird themes that I don't want to go too deep into. But I, I think that it's just, again, stuff that I'm willing to just overlook because there's so much better things about this show beyond that. And the whole point of Eris and Rudy scene here, it wasn't for Rudy to get a quick nut and just be like, haha, I'm getting all the bitches in this isekai world. No, it's actually a really tragic scene where Eris leaves Rudy because she wants to get stronger for him and herself to be more independent after facing off Orsted and hearing about the news that might have happened back at home, right? And Rudy misinterpreting that and thinking that, oh, abandonment again, someone has left me again and then crying and being sad. On. I'll talk more about that in a bit. And since his character is the most important thing about this series, I do not care about this series. The slight amount of- The character is the most important part about the series. Rudy is definitely significant, but I just enjoy the wide 
roster of like side characters, right? Sophie, Eris, Roxy, all the different people that we meet at the even the academy, right? Even like the uh, small little arc that we have with like Sarah and the other members. Um, even like the guy that kind of looked like Paul too, Orsted, Nanahoshi, right? There's a lot of really amazing side supporting characters that highlights the show for me beyond just Rudy. The intrigue I had was gone by the end of the first core. While the concept behind his character arc is really good, it stopped appealing to me because of his behavior. And I know what you're that's thinking. That's fair. Well, probably pretentious, that's way too long, nobody would ever say that name out loud. Let PP. me rephrase that. Well, Rudy is supposed to be creepy. That's his character flaw. He isn't perfect, nobody is. Well, Mr. Viewer, that mm. doesn't change the fact that I have to put up with his uncomfortable behavior. That's perfectly fine, right? It's a character flaw, he's supposed to be shitty, and that's fine. But just as how you're, you can handle that fact, can't you handle the fact that the audience watching this shit will get turned off by that and say, I don't really resonate with it. That's also totally fine. For over 20 episodes. I don't know if he does change, but he hasn't yet. And it's been a while. When has he changed? Yeah, I think Rudy has definitely changed since season one. But what about other tendencies of degeneracy, like him worshipping his fucking master's panties? Or him being horny and getting away with a lot of different shit. Has that changed? Not so much. A lot of people's talking points about Mushoku Tensei is how Rudy just gets away with all the flaws that he had in real life. Compared to in this Isekai world because he's hot now. And you know, it's just everything just kind of works out. Not really. Because you know, there's a lot of fucking sufferings that Els he's taking. Just look at what happened to Zenith and his dad and you know, much more. But like, he's changed. For sure, there's growth and development, but the degenerate tendencies still linger, and a lot of people don't like that. When you introduce a character flaw, you are supposed to resolve it, either by removing the flaw somewhere down the line, or presenting the flaw as something the character can be proud of. You can't just introduce a flaw that affects people's viewing experiences in a negative way and do nothing about it. Assuming I'm not the only one who's bothered by this stuff. Of course. A lot of people are bothered by this stuff, but just as many people also kind of relish the fact that he just liked me for real. He degenerate, getting away with this shit. Again, those type of people that watch Mushoku Tensei, like, I just think that you're so fucking despicable. And the fact that you self-report yourself on my videos and making those comments about, like, all this degenerate, pro-degenerate shit. It's just unbelievable how delusional you are. The show has its positives. As I mentioned, some of the ideas and concepts are promising, and the all-around production value is really, really impressive. The yeah. show, at least the first season, featured a stacked lineup of animators. The direction was matured and focused, and the animation largely kept up with the directorial ambition. Same with season 2. Season 2 was also phenomenal. While it didn't look anywhere near as impressive as the pre-animated trailer, it did look really good. The quality dipped a bit in the second core, but it wasn't really an issue to me. This show looked great. Or it was a high-profile production and the visuals are the only reason why I'm still watching this show on a weekly basis. Although, the second season is a lot weaker. The compositing- Yeah, a lot of people don't like the uh... <laughs> the, the, the... Erectile Dysfunction, Rom-Com, Slice of Life, you know, Academy arc. Yeah, that, that, that definitely was slow and sluggish. ...is underwhelming with poor blending and excessive grainy filters. The drawing consistency is lower and the animation is largely lacking, with a couple of scenes looking bad. Kyukawa is trying his best. Oh, he's talking about production value compared to season 1, I see. ...to carry the action side of things, but there's only so much he can do. I hope we get a few of those all-star lineups this season. And now, let's talk about the event. <laughs> this is... Oh, man. <laughs> I still think that... Okay, first of all... What, what, what can you say about this? I think a funny thing to say about this is that Eris actually groomed the Rudy and that she overpowered him and she manipulated him. Something of like, will you have my kittens near? Something about like family baiting. Uh, but also the biggest component is, you know, what Rudy is before and what Rudy is now and how people are very uncomfortable with this age shit. And then people will also then go do stupid mental gymnastics talking about mental age and, you know, developmental hormones as a new boy, making him think more like a child rather than a grown ass adult. It's a messy fucking combo. End. And I have to watch my words here because it's YouTube. Let's see. In the penultimate episode of the second core, Rudy has... 
um intimate mm-hmm. interactions with yes, kids yes he does it is being of an age considered not legal and the amount of mental gymnastics that the mushoku tense fans engage in to try and defend this <laughs> my favorite mental gymnastics again is mental age man it's just like you don't understand rudy may have been 40 year old physically but his soul was 14 he never grew he was stunted he's a victim i'm like you actually believe this shit bro that's crazy is insane the main argument is that rudy being reborn is a hard reset and he is indeed a kid which is absolutely stupid because he clearly retains the memories of and the experiences from the 30 something years of his yeah obviously but i think one of the most compelling arguments that you can make for rudy here is talk about those hormones this is something that i never even fucking imagined until oshinoko did it there's this whole talk about how aqua is like he's having a monologue of like you know he used to be like a 30 something year old doctor now he's like a high school kid reincarnated but because he's in this developmental phase and the hormones are rushing through and because he's been around social peers around his age he basically have regressed his mindset and he basically is a teenager rather than being perceived as an adult that is a stronger argument than just mental gymnastics i think sorry uh than mental age his previous life also how am i supposed to accept that when the show tells me otherwise rudy's internal voice is that of his adult self he yeah. shows up as his old self when yeah. he's summoned by the man god how yeah. else am i supposed to interpret these things the show is basically telling me that regardless of your mental and physical selves are so d- well this is a bit of a out of This is the man got confronting Rudy I think and it's a bit of an out of context example cuz like what's the what's the meaning here that when he shows up it's a physical stuff here but the mental state it's it's all different therefore but he acts fundamentally different in this state what against the man god versus when he's actually acting in real life in the Mushoku Tensei world how young his physical body is his mind and soul is that of a 30 something year That's your mental form. Your body is fine. I mean, the show is kind of just saying it. Old, please feel free to present any arguments against my logic down in the comments. I probably I want to read some comments after this. Oh boy, we don't read some fucking comments. Don't respond to most of them, but I'll try and read as many of them as I can. The second main argument is that the fantasy world doesn't have any rules about this stuff, and Rudy's actions aren't anything out of the ordinary, which again is stupid because he spent more time on Earth where these rules do exist. As such, at best, he's taking advantage of the fact that certain Earth rules don't apply in the Earth. Yeah, so like I think this is one of the things that people bring up to say that Rudy isn't actually growing or developing but rather he's getting away with all this degenerate shit because he's hot now and there's this from customs in the new world. That's definitely a talking point that I've been hearing. The world. There is a third argument according to which I'm supposed to dislike Rudy so his actions are fine and there's nothing wrong with this concept. Yeah, I, I, he's a dislikable character. There's some funny things about him. There's also a lot of shitty things about him. Is he my favorite main character? Far from it, but I don't watch the show for Rudy, but because he's the main character and everything is through his perspective, I could definitely understand why people like him would not like this show. But I think that the hero of the story shouldn't cross this line, regardless of how unlikable he's supposed to be. It's just so incredibly creepy to me. Was it really necessary? Did they really need to include a scene like this? I think it was a but like When you say was this necessary? Well then you got to ask like what happened because of this? Well Eris left on her own journey, but there can be different ways of doing this shit, right? And what about the erectile dysfunction stuff? Could Rudy have gotten the erectile dysfunction without, you know, intercourse happening and then just leaving? Did the erectile dysfunction even need to happen is another set of questions. Am I supposed to be correcting the author of the story that he's trying to present? What was even the point of the erectile dysfunction? So that he can get saved by Sylphie at the academy and then but like it didn't need to be ED it could have been Eris could have simply left and Rudy could have also just been just equally as depressed and we could have just completely bypassed the erectile dysfunction shit and still had him be very depressed and have abandonment issues and Sylphie to then save that right yeah there is a different way to go about it but Like the more I think about it the more I realize that maybe the scene was would her just leaving randomly been it kind of would have been less impactful I don't know At the end of the day 
in terms of getting the most engagement, I think this is kind of smart because it definitely creates friction and drama and controversy, right? So if you go from like a author's perspective of trying to make as much noise as possible, then this was smart. But other than that, I, I, I don't know if I can play so much defense, man. I know, but the ED, the erectile dysfunction stuff was supposed to stunt him and show his growth and understanding of love, but you didn't need ED to do that. There's many different ways to portray the lessons and the stories that Rudy goes through in season two, arc one, sorry, core one, and not have ED a thing. The more I think about it, you never needed that. But anime degenerates, we love the fan service. There's also a lot of fun to be had from erectile dysfunction jokes. I, I personally loved how ridiculous it was that we spent an entire arc, you know, fixing his impotence. But uh, yeah, there is definitely a way to do this without the, uh, you know, the scene happening, huh? The more I think about it, yeah, there's definitely possible. With so many red flags, I say no. And that sums up my issues with- No, no, no. If he didn't have ED, he'd do Sarah, never had character development is something that I- can't really agree with because again it's not whether or not his dick is hard or not it's about his mind and if he kept thinking about Eris and the abandonment he could have easily pushed away Sarah even though his dick was hard no straight up why can't that be the case you're so fixated on whether or not his dick is working but you forget you're not seeing like the bigger picture of what this whole theme is the abandonment and the depression that he could still push Sarah away now, let's think about the steps that led up to Sarah. They were definitely getting along. And they were vibing hard. And because they were vibing hard, Rudy was in a better place of mind where he was kind of like happier, right? And now the depression shit is kind of gone. And maybe you needed a limp dick at that moment to really drive home the whole Sarah conflict. But I still think that Rudy could have simply had a flashback about Eris leaving and push Sarah away. I think that is definitely possible, but I do see how a limp dick, this is, what are we doing right now? What are we, what, what are we actually doing right now? This is crazy that we're fucking doing mental gymnastics on do we need a limp dick or not for the story to make sense? What the fuck? With this show, Rudy being incredibly weird and creepy, which makes me not want to root for him, which in turn makes the story feel dull because he is the protagonist. A lot of people were surprised when I said that I didn't like this show, so here's a video explaining why. Feel free to comment what you think of this series down in the comments section. I still think Mushoku Tensei is a legendary story. The main character is creepy, but I can like separate fiction from reality and turn like a, turn like a blind eye. And it's, this isn't the first show that I'm able to turn a blind eye from the degeneracy. Even shows like Gushing Over Magical Girls, there's a lot of uncomfortable themes happening where it's just like, I'd rather not this not really happen. I'm able to do that, and I can appreciate the story for what it is beyond that. But to some people, they cannot, and I can definitely understand why they would not like Mushoku Tensei, and that's perfectly fine. It's all opinions and preferences at the end of the day. Entertainment is subjective, and just because someone has, else has a different opinion, doesn't mean that their opinion is right or wrong, it's just what they enjoy. So at the end of the day, that's that, but we ain't done yet. Wanna read some comments? Oh, baby. Also, <laughs> the, <laughs> the like to dislike RA show, it's actually not as bad as I assumed. Here's a link for the video, by the way. Please go check out Mr. Probably Pretentious's channel. Now let's read some comments. I'm sorry, but why do all fans I meet for the show go? You have no valid opinion. Because you didn't finish watching it. Am I supposed to sit through the anime watching a grown man be a pedo and root for him when he goes through changes and becomes normal? How am I supposed to sit and watch an anime for its world building when the person that makes me uncomfortable and whom I hate most is the literal da da da? Well, I think that the uh, whole notion of do you need to finish watching it? Yeah, because like, they're, like, it's not about the start or the middle, but how it ends. And if there has been tremendous growth at the end, that justifies everything that happened all the way through? Not necessarily. But I can understand why people watching it would feel uncomfortable and they don't want to push themselves to watch it even more because it's still these reiterating themes of weird shit they don't like. Just hoping that in the future, maybe it'll change. That, that's, that's a valid point.
Dude, so glad I'm not the only one who thinks Rudeus is absolutely disgusting. Everyone who comes up with bullshit reason to excuse his behavior and say he becomes a better person later in the show. I do think that he is becoming better relatively compared to season one Rudy, but that's not saying too much since the betterment has to do with the relationships and the faults that he had back in real world, you know, you know, covering the depression and being like a locked in. I think one of the perfect examples is like in season two with Norn and Paul, but because the degenerate lingers, people say that he has no growth and he's not a better person. I uh, doesn't want to do that. I agree so much. I couldn't understand people liking this and couldn't like the main character because I always saw him as a creep man interacting with young girls and women in a very disgusting way. And the whole show was pretty uninteresting, like the way the scenes and places changed. Just felt like it was blank and nothing was actually going on. That's not true. I think that people, once they have a biased perspective of oh, do they like a show or not, they're going to become more unengaged. If people don't like Mushoku Tensei because of Rudeus, they're going to be giving this show like they're not going to be as locked in. They can't pick up all these different subtle things and can't appreciate the story beyond that. Therefore, they're going to call it mid. Completely agree. I like the story. It's interesting. But the way the main character actually just disgusts me, the only time I would see myself even enjoying this would be if I skipped every part Rudy's acts like a predator. But honestly, I don't feel blah, blah, blah. Only thing I want to say is that Rudy doesn't mature quickly because that's not how growth happens in real people. That's true. I think in fiction, right, it, it's just like bad shit happens, then one talk no jutsu, then they're fixed immediately. It takes years and years to kind of like fix these behaviors. And fiction stories will often use some sort of event or trigger to allow growth to happen quicker and more entertainingly. But think about it. How fast would a real dude that has had something to be part of him for 30 years change into a better person grow into that fault? Yeah, I think that this is a totally fair, logic, reasonable sound argument, but... That doesn't mean that you should expect people to also accept Rudy for that, you know. They're not going to accept it. They, you can acknowledge that this is correct, but they're not going to sit there and watch this dude be a fucking creep the entire time. This is coming from a 50... Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Oh. This is coming from a 15-year-old girl who watched a little more than half the season. This show honestly disgusts me. Can I really... I don't know if you're actually 15, but sure, why not? The way that the fans try to frame it as the main character trying to redeem himself, how he used to act, he hasn't act tried to redeem himself a single time throughout the first season. He hasn't tried to redeem himself. Uh, it's been a long time since I watched season one. Maybe there are different examples that's happening, but I think a lot of the redemptions happened in season two, and if we maybe kind of take into this guy's argument into consideration of how it takes a long time to you know get to that stage, maybe this makes sense. He has slight redemption in the first episode when he saves people from the bus, but that all goes to shit when the isekai portion starts. He treats women grossly. He treats children grossly. He's weirdly overpowered like most. That's not really a problem. OP power doesn't really matter. Uh, what is different about this show from any other isekai? This is a lot different. The world building and animation can be amazing, but that doesn't matter when the anime is essentially just... That's not true. There's plenty of other animes that doesn't get this much fucking heat that is not this. This is a very... I, I, I don't believe that you're even 15. This is a fucking... Uh, I'm 15, by the way. It's, it's probably the most, like, terminally just Musho Kotensi hater that's, like, 30-something years old. But, um, I think that's pretty much it. I think all these comments are just basically gonna be, you know, we're just preaching to the, uh... We're basically preaching to the choir, as in, of course, people of the same mindset's gonna watch the video and say the same shit. It's understandable you don't like Mushoku Tensei. Everyone is entitled to their own opinions, but I hope you don't hold hatred to those who love it myself. And that's perfectly fine. And I think that's where we should end it here, right? At the end of the day, it's totally fine to not like Mushoku Tensei because Rudy is the main character and they don't like the main character. Perfectly fine. I enjoy Mushoku Tensei despite it being creepy because there's so much more to the show that I enjoy than just the main character. But that's pretty much it. And, oh, I can't wait. Uh, ho hopefully, there's going to be uh, mentally ill people arguing in the comment section that I can farm, you know, the comments. So, please don't let me down, monkeys. I'll see you next time.